Well, here's the official greatest theme song ever. Oh, shit. Listen to that. Fading it in. All right, guys, you know what it is. We stepped it up with new equipment. This is the 531, where we take our top five list on a particular subject. We debate it down to a top three. And Zach, we don't debate it down to a top one. We debate that number one spot. Who is the king of the fucking mountain? And this week, we are talking top ECW wrestlers. Now, it, I mean, I think it'd be fair to say that ECW is a fairly big promotion as we were coming up, correct, guys? Well, I like ECW. I might like a little more to do. We're kind of old. I think we grew up more on Crockett, AWA, UWA. But ECW, it was probably the most hype in the magazine for us. It was definitely one of those things. Like, I just couldn't wait to watch ECW. Maybe I built it up too much. So, like, when I back to see it on CNN, it wasn't the best. But, like, the tape trading stuff, I remember AJ got his hands on when he just got out of the military. A little fun fact, he got out of the military. He got some stuff like the Malenko Guerrero Classic, and that was just amazing. I still remember that stuff to this day. I think we might be in the minority because our best memories of ECW, I think, have a tendency of being towards that technical side and not necessarily towards the blood and, blood and gut side. Yeah, I'm RBD, Jerry Lynn. A lot of that stuff was like my favorite. Like I said, Malenko Guerrero. I did like the Ray Psychosis dream, but that was because that was the first time I ever seen the aerial like that mixed in with stuff. That was pretty good. Well, it was also the first time we ever saw Chris Benoit break someone's neck. Ah, uh, yes. I remember you were not too happy about that. You were kind of cringing about that. And then Joey Styles literally showed it again and did like the matted teleprompter and it was exactly how he broke that move that. <laughs> yeah, I had I had just a little behind the scenes, I had just started wrestling at that point. And to see somebody injured like that and knowing what it could do, yeah, it made me cringe a lot. That yeah. match is actually featured on the Benoit D V D from WWE, as a matter of fact. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the few times the WWE will ever feature Sabu. <laughs> that's very true but guys let's get into this list we got this brand new sound equipment we're sounding fucking fresh randy from Ooh. randy osgood don't worry where the fuck he's from he's our number one fan. Damn <laughs> he's got taz terry funk rob van dam tommy dreamer and mikey whiprack what do you guys think about that list Ooh. interesting right <laughs> Uh, uh, it's an interesting list. I mean, the fact that he included Mikey Whipwreck in there. Obviously, Mikey was very loyal to um, ECW. I'm just not sure he belongs in that big of a spot. No, nah, I've got a soft spot for Whipwreck, I guess. I, I like Whipwreck, but he wouldn't be in my top five. No way. Every else, everything else on that list is solid, though. Do you think it's a chance that it could be the generational divide? Could it be maybe somebody that's younger Whipwreck came at a time where maybe he was just so cutting edge that they were like, oh, wow, that is somebody to make note of. Well, with him being a little younger, too, he would have seen the later side of ECW. So at that point, you're talking about Whipwreck, Perino, and those guys being more of a featured act than they were earlier on. Yeah, yeah. he was uh, He was ECW's one, two, three kid. He just... They filled him up as a underdog guy who was getting beat every week, and then he got a big win. But I don't know. I mean, I like him, but I don't. Do what I'm, do what I I'm like that. Him. I like that. Mikey started off as being as skinny as the one, two, three kid, and by the end of his run, he looked like he had eaten James Mitchell. Mm. <laughs> Whipwreck actually does a podcast, I believe, with Jerry Lynn on the MLW Radio Network that I don't listen to all the time, but. Uh, Whipwreck is an entertaining listen. I tell anybody that can find it, go out there and check it out. Now, AJ, I got your I list. And I was going to say, that's weird because I would expect um, Gary Lynn to be the personality out of this Oh, shit. He's calling you up right now. He wants a spot. Uh, yeah, I forgot to put Dude Out to Serve. And uh, Dallas Texas is trying to get a hold of me. 
God damn, those Von Eric boys. They want in. The funny thing is, it's actually you and me now, Joe. I've got to call Dave back. He dropped us for um, Dallas, Texas. He dropped out? Oh, that, shit. Yeah, he dropped out of the call, so that better be um, one of the Von Eric boys. I'm going to try and call him back real quick and attach him back to the call. Hold on one second. Martin's potato bread is coming calling. Hey, Dave, welcome back to the program. <laughs> Do not disturb is going on right now. <laughs> that better than one of the Von Erics in order for you to um, drop us. <laughs> I would try to hang up, but uh, <laughs> the Von Erics can wait. <laughs> no, they can't. Dave's like the old. Dave's like the old time who's like, damn the technology. <laughs> I know the he Von went Erics to. Can wait, Dave. He went to hang up on them, and instead he hung up on us. <laughs> he actually ended up hanging up on. Yeah. He actually ended up hanging up on both of us. So it pissed us off and the Von Eric. Thank you, Dave. Jesus. <laughs> Tell him they'll never work in this town again. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So getting back on track, AJ, you had Raven, Terry Funk, Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, and Taz. It's not a bad list. Absolutely. We'll talk, we'll talk about my list when we compare it with um, everybody later on. But I'm going to tell you that, to me, the important one there for the fundamental and the growing of ECW was Terry Funk having the legitimacy for the promotion early on. Yep. Mm. Uh, Mike Flynn turned in a list. He had Raven, who I believe Raven was his all-time favorite. It was, it was one of his all-time favorite, 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 favorite. Mike Flynn. And if I'm not wrong, wasn't that one of Jake's all-time top favorite ECW characters, too? I believe Absolutely right. I, I know that that was one of Jake's favorites. Because I remember it was a question when we interviewed Jake, but I couldn't remember if the person asking the question was the bigger Raven fan or if Jake was. No, it was, it was Jake. Jake was. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, given I'm that... I'm pretty sure he was more of a Johnny Polo fan, but I think he liked Raven, too. <laughs> Either way, given that literal reference, it just makes sense with Jake. But the rest of Mike Flynn's list, he goes Raven, RVD, Taz, Shane Douglas, and Sabu. Mm. Oh, but hard to argue any of that. Jake got us a list. He has Raven, Taz, RVD, Sabu, Shane Douglas... And it wouldn't be Jake if he didn't have a sixth or seventh on his list, and he's got the Dudleys and yeah. New Jack. Now, other than the honorable mention, I think he has the exact same list as Mike Flynn. He does, yes. Luckily, luck, yeah, luckily for Jake, he always does the eight three one, so it's not too bad. <laughs> hey. well, what about Scott from Volatile? Let's he's check him out. I was going to say, he's, a, he's staying list. far enough away from our gimmick, but <coughs> Scott from Voluntown <laughs> had... RVD, Sandman, Taz, Sabu, and the Dudleys. Yeah. Right. Wow. He was going to put Dreamer if it had to be singles, but he was into the Dudleys. And I thought it's interesting because Jake wanted to mention the Dudleys and Scott mentioned the Dudleys. So the Dudleys itself are uh, getting a lot of play. I think that's the first time we've ever done a, a, you know, a best of list that wasn't a tag team where we had a tag team mentioned twice. Well, wait a minute, because if you mention the Dudley ECW, you're not talking about a tag team. You're talking about, like, 12 people. Well, there's a faction. Yeah, I was going to get into that. Yeah, you got you got uh, Stutter and Dudley. That might have been Bubba. Uh, Dances with Dudley. Uh, Sign Guy Dudley. Big Dick Dudley, everybody's favorite. I was going to say, yeah. how are we leaving Big Dick Dudley out of this? Oh, uh, we're never leaving Big Dick out of this. He's always the life of the party. I, w is so this a new he, gimmick to go along with the good pussy bit? <laughs> Big Dick Dudley. Unfortunately, Big Dick is dead. Oh, no. Mm. R.I.P. Uh, Jesus, why Why do you got to bring down the mood of the 531? Because I'm so fucked up. I'm looking at this next list, and I don't know whose list it is. I wrote faves. So I don't know who the fuck that is. <laughs> I uh I sent you I sent you Jesse's list. Do you have Jesse? Mm. Is it RVD, Jerry Lynn, Mike Awesome, New Jack, and the Dudleys? Nope. Nope. Jesse's list is right next to it. I don't know who the fuck Faves is. 
Well, <laughs> that's a list. Who knows? Folks, uh, we got we got new equipment. We didn't get smarter overnight. I'm sorry. But Jesse from New Hampshire, it yeah. was his birthday last week. We fucked up, left him off the 531. I took it so hard. I got a box of gimmicks filled up, ready to go his way. I just got to get a mailing a mailing label on it. But I'm pretty sure you can just ship it to New Hampshire and they'll know where it is. <laughs> just drop it off in the corner. <laughs> drop it off in the corner of that one horse town that he lives in. <laughs> The four people in the town will fight over the box. <laughs> God, like three of them are his family too, so hopefully he goes over. But anyways, <laughs> enough shit talking about New Hampshire. We love Jesse up there. His list is RVD, mm. Mike Awesome, yeah. Sandman, Terry Funk, Shane Douglas. Mike Awesome making the list was a nice touch. I feel like he could have made more lists, but, you know, so many good talent in ECW, but Mike Austin was definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, and another big dick that's dead. Oh. All right, P. <laughs> it's tough because, like, some of these guys were important for, like, the promotion, and then some of mm-hmm. these guys were just, like, your personal favorites there. Now, we. Well, two things about Mike Austin, uh, real quick, about Mike Austin. One of the things that stuck out was that legendary rival, rival in Masato Tanaka absolutely brutalized each other and absolutely a how-to on to get yourself a concussion. Like, those chair shots are ridiculous. And the other thing with Tanaka is, I'm sorry, with Mike Austin is he's probably involved in one of the most important matches in ECW history where he was a WCW contracted wrestler that lost the ECW title with WWF contracted wrestler at the ECW arena. Yeah, that was the... Yeah, between, yeah that's... That was a big moment. I can still remember that one as, like it happened yesterday. He lost uh, it to Taz, you goof. Whatever. <laughs> and it's that weird time where, like, there was a lot of sharing of talent. There was a lot of contracts. It was a lot of that double dealing yeah. that Paul Heyman was doing that he was able to get these guys that were under contract for, like, favors owed well, or other things. That wasn't totally the thing there. Mike Austin actually went to WCW. Well, he still had the ECW title, and there was a contract dispute. So to settle, they had him go drop the belt at the ECW arena, and they brought in Taz, who had a good relationship. They had a good relationship with Man, obviously, too. God, I, I, think, I think this that, might be one of the few times that Dave's ever schooled me on knowledge. Good good look on that, Dave. I try to, I, I try to be humble, Jeff. You know? <laughs> I think me and Dave can both also agree Mike Blossom's best run is as the fat lady thriller. Ah, uh, it's a fat chick thriller. Show some respect. <laughs> Have some class. I mean, I would debate that his best run was almost his MLW run that we're going to cover eventually here. But he, he really made a name for himself in ECW, and that Masato Tanaka feud is definitely one to be seen. Now, yeah. we got a few lists coming in from Rock and Randy's Rock and Wrestling Group. The first one is from Brian Huff. And he had RVD, Dudley's, New Jack, Raven, and Shane Douglas. Every time I hear the Dudley's, I'm getting more and more pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. You want they got heat. They know how to produce heat. Well, <laughs> shit, this is gonna be a long really list cool. for you then, because Kevin Dignam <laughs> from Rock and Randy's Rock and Wrestling Group had Taz, <laughs> RVD, yeah. Rhino. Raven and everybody's favorite world renowned tag team, the most decorated tag team in WWF history, the Dudleys. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorites. When we go into that, when we actually debate this down, you're going to find out why this is pissing me off. And then we'll go later. They're great heels. Anyway, Nick Matrano from Rock and Randy's Rock and Wrestling Group had RVD, Shane Douglas. New Jack, Taz, and AJ, you're never going to see this coming. <laughs> Spike Dudley. Ooh, Spike Dudley. That runs up the letter. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Totten from Rock and Randy's Rock and Wrestling Group had Sabu, Damn. RVD, Terry Funk, Too Cold Scorpio, and Taz. Ooh. Too Cold. 
you can tell you can tell me and Dave are both actually happy with that one. We love two gold Scorpio. Oh, who oh, yeah. doesn't? Actually, now that I'm looking at these lists, this faves list that I couldn't previously remember who it was, I'm pretty sure that's mm-hmm. our buddy Josh Dunn. I don't know how I didn't write his name down. It's been a long week, guys. <laughs> now Ryan Damon uh, from man. Ryan Damon from Rock and Randy's Rock and Wrestling Group had Terry Funk, Taz, Shane Douglas, Raven, and Chris Candido, a name we haven't heard yet. Uh, another one. Rest in peace. Another one who passed away too soon. I love Chris Candido, but these are supposed to be the best freaking names and the biggest names of ECW. <laughs> I, to me, I, I think I it's think, sometimes who Bobby people Donna's encountered. Shit. Did you just I say something Bobby about Donna's the fucking Body Donnas? ECW. Yeah, Body Donnas skip was ECW. I, I, you know. <laughs> Chris Candido was number three in his stable. He wasn't even number one in his stable. <laughs> but he wasn't even number one in his own bedroom, sadly, man. Exactly. Oh. Now, Shard Johnson from Rock and Randy's Rock and Wrestling Group had Taz, wow, RVD, Perry Saturn, Shane huh. Douglas, and the most decorated tag team in the United States, <laughs> maybe in all of America, the Dudleys. The Dudleys and ECW weren't even bigger than the Eliminators. How do you put just Perry Satter? Wait, 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 wait. We'll argue that later. I, I could argue that the Dudleys were bigger than the Eliminators, though. They weren't necessarily a, a better all-around technical team, but the they had The Dudleys in ECW, not the Dudleys with their whole WWE career. <laughs> the Dudleys, they were like eight-time tag champs ECW, I want to say. They didn't even only be together. They... They were like the free birds. They freaking located people in the house. Well, listen. Anybody who gets on pay-per-view and points out fans in the arena, and, and we got a mother who taught her daughter how to suck dick, is not right in my book. All right. All right now, all right. I'm going to bring I'm, you guys I'm, my I'm list. Waiting. I'm, I'm going to start off with New Jack <laughs> because I just recently read his biography. And if you oh guys want to read a good wrestling book, Look up New Jack's book. If for nothing else, just to find out his opinion of Benoit and the Benoit family murders. Number two on my... How to Kill a Man? I swear I didn't do it. Oh, no. Let me... We're actually going to take... How I would have killed that day. We're actually going to take time out on the air for me to get into my Kindle real quick and find this. Because I'm currently reading oh, the yeah. Martha Hart book, which is amazing, by the way. Mm. By yeah. the way, if you're looking up the definition of ghostwriter, you might want to check out the Jack book. All right, it's called <laughs> Memoir <laughs> of a Pro Wrestling Extremist, and it's New Jack and Jason Norman. And mm. I wouldn't doubt that he had to form some of his words, but it almost gives you an idea that there's a little more of a person behind New Jack than you would have ever thought with his character. I mean, the person behind New Jack loves violence and drugs. That doesn't change. But it's a very good He's book. He's actually a really good cook. What, what's his go-to recipe? Spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this book, Mike Joe? I, I'm really glad I asked that question. <laughs> Number two on my list, I had Steve Austin. I know Steve Austin didn't make his name necessarily in ECW and didn't do a whole shit of a lot, but it was the... Those promos are the seed of the Stone Cold character, so that's why I chose to include it, at least. I threw Mike Awesome on my list because he's just a fucking monster. Taz, and then I put Paul Heyman because you wouldn't have the company without... You wouldn't have had the company that long without Heyman. Joe, let me uh, just say, like, when you said Steve Austin, you're right. He didn't really do much in ECW. But I think immediately, and I'll speak to AJ too, we knew exactly why you put him on the list. There was those promos. And those promos were the start of the Stone Cold character that we got on. Now, in fairness, if you're going to put Steve Austin on there, the Nick Foley promos, like King Duty, Dewey, and stuff like that, yeah, those were on there too. 
Well, and I'll say this: as soon as I said like Austin in the promos, Nick popped in my head as well. So. See, I looked at it as an Austin versus Pillman thing. Both guys that didn't do a ton in ECW, but came in and mm-hmm. had their run mostly just through personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were basically like a Goldberg match. Three minutes of great shit. And it almost <laughs> like really kind of kicked off anything they did afterwards in WWE. So we got one less, Dave. Who are you hiding behind yeah, that curtain, to to bud? I am ready to give you this list, all right? First off, number one on my list, the guy who closed out ECW, the original ECW SWA champion, the man beast Rhino, all right? Tell that bitch happy Mother's Day. All right. The guy who kicked off the original ECW, Shane Douglas, threw the NWA belt down. He's number two on my list. Number three, perhaps the most dominant ECW heavyweight champion at the time, Taz, and number four, the guy who probably had the best matches and was all around the best worker in ECW and consistent, RBD. And number five, I got to have this guy on the list. He's the soul of ECW. He's the Dusty Rose of ECW. He's Tommy Dream. Very solid. No Lance Storm. <laughs> no Lance Storm. <laughs> I think he's number nine on Jake's list. <laughs> now, honorable mention, Dave. N- since you've seen the early MLW that we're planning on reviewing soon, how much is yep. early MLW very similar to like a latter day, almost midday ECW? Carbon copy. It, it was one thing I actually didn't like about the early MLW shows was it felt like it was literally ripping off the original ECW and not having its own identity at the time. Yeah, going to the same arenas, using the same ring announcer. I don't yep. know about the same security, but a lot of the similar things that ECW used, even down to the early MLW tapes were distributed on highspots.com. Awesome website. It just also happens to be the website that a lot of early ECW stuff got distributed on and i just wanted to bring up mlw because we noticed how much of a similarity there was early on and that's something we're going to talk about in those early review shows now guys, guys in fairness to, in fairness to mlw they're not the only ones who were doing that in that time period pzw before it started doing more of the death matches was also very much a, a clone of the old ecw oh yeah that doesn't surprise me it's just I I guess it's just watching the promotion and really wanting to like it, but just feeling like it's the holdovers or trying to keep that feeling of ECW going. Now, we've got... Yes, yes. We've got a lot of similar people on these lists. Taz shows up on quite a bit. Raven, RVD... If you, if you guys, yeah, the, the Dudleys do make it on quite a few lists, but if we had to settle on a top three to go forward, it would have to be, what, RVD, Taz? Tommy Dreamer not make more lists. What about, was Shane Douglas on quite a few lists? I really like Shane. I think Shane actually got left off a lot of lists. Shane was on more than Dreamer, surprisingly. And you would think yeah. Dreamer would be more important given his role in keeping ECW going throughout the years. You know, when I mean, it made its return. You know what? I don't think made anybody's list is one of the guys who was big over the last three years of ECW, Steve Carino. Yeah. Steve, Steve yeah. Carino, and he was another one that early MLW really took off with him. And he mm. makes a, a lot of a point in it that some of his early MLW promos make a point to say that a lot of these guys were collecting WWF checks or collecting WCW checks while he was getting checks bounced and bleeding out in Philadelphia rings. So I think when we start covering MLW, AJ's really going to be into the Carino promos early on. One of my... I do like Carino from early MLW, but one of my other favorite things with Carino was actually, believe it or not, his matches with Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> oh, yeah. He... I, thought they were extremely, I thought they were extremely entertaining. He was the first person who I saw to take basic moves, make it look like a high spot, and stop into a basic move. 
I, yeah. Really great deal. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to say it. I, I know what you're thinking of. AJ's talking about there would be a spot sometimes Torino would do in the ring where he'd set up the chair and fans would get crazy because he looked like he was going to drop toe hole again to a chair. But instead, he'd just kick him in the gut and put him in a front face lock and then just sit down on the chair. Love that spot. Yeah, it's a good spot. <laughs> <laughs> I think what I'm seeing from this list, just, I'm looking up and down. I got a list in front of me, too. I'm seeing RBD. Taz and Sabu is kind of the three guys that pop up a lot for me here. All right, so we'll go with RVD, Taz, and Sabu going forward, noting how important mm-hmm. people like Tommy Dreamer were to kind of being in the oh, yeah. office and keeping it going. Mike Awesome, another guy uh, that we brought up. Well, wait a minute. There's one more person we got to respond about, Raven. Yeah. R- Raven's character in ECW was over him and Sandman. Mm-hmm. They're over as much as any other promotion in the world. And people tuned in weekly to see what like, people like Raven were going to do. Yeah, and Sandman's another one I would have thought would have popped up on more lists just because of how immortal that entrance is. Mm. So, all right. Uh, so I don't know. I should have mentioned that before um, we went into the next three. Because to me, and, and I know you know this from my list, to me, Raven was more influential than RBD. Yes. Yeah, it's funny because if I was going to take somebody off the list, it would be Sabu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I would take Sabu out of those three also. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Are we putting Raven in over Sabu as a last-minute call? I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, I just think Raven belongs on that list. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. Without Raven. All right. So, for the sake of having a top three now, between RVD, <laughs> Raven, and Taz, who's the first to go? Raven. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. For me, I, I think it's out to RVD and Taz. I think RVD was the most consistent. Mr. Five Star Wrestling, showing up another promotion, absolutely extreme. And I think Taz was just the most dominant champion. I'll say it again. I said it before. He was beat me if you can, survive if I let you. He went undefeated for a while. He had the FTW championship. Taz was just the ultimate, ultimate character in ECW in terms of looking like a legit shoot fighter would kill you. I believe Taz was an absolute badass. Come to find out, he could handle his own, but he was a lot more... He wasn't quite as bad as he was made out. You thought this motherfucker was Brock Lesnar the way they made him out. To be. Yeah, I, I agree with you. We can easily go forward with the two of them. I just want to make sure that I'm clear about the fact that to me, Raven was the best character. Him and Taz. Yeah. And RVD wasn't a character. RVD no. was what you saw on TV. He's a right. stoner who's extremely athletic. I know. I've yeah. watched him on Action Bro- Bronson watches Ancient Aliens and. RVD is RVD no matter where he is. It's a great yeah. thing to see. And I think that's, and I think that's yeah. what AJ ultimately really loved about RVD. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm feeling this right. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> now, I'm all about the, you know me, I'm all about 420. <laughs> there you go. Now that we're down to RVD and Taz, oh, guys, uh, mm-hmm. one thing I wanted to mention, how great is a pairing of Taz with Brian Cage at the moment? Oh, I like that a lot. Go ahead. Hey, guys, you, hey, when they tune in for the regular part of the podcast, they're going to definitely hear my opinion on Brian Cage and Taz. I think the pairing is absolutely awesome, and I think mm. Taz is as good of a mouthpiece as you can get for that monster. Well, at this point, mm. actually, they would have already heard it because usually our 531 comes at the end. Uh, but we're almost at the end of the five, three, one guys, RVD, Taz, who you got going over? I got Taz going over. I know, I know who Asian has got going over all day long. Um, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's, first, of all, first of all, let's tell the people this. We'll, we'll be straight up about this. A, not real big on the weed. B, nope. to me, I always like the legitimate, uh, shoot style of wrestling. And Taz was that badass who you believed was going to choke you out or sure. tap you out. And that is everything I love about that one. But I will say this. Behind the scenes, RBD made Taz sick a hand. And that didn't work out so well for Taz. So, <laughs> truth be told, that stoner kid can kick, box, and shoot. However, 
All right. So this is how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to word it. If we're going by who had the bigger, greater career, who was the bigger star, I'm going with RBG. But when I'm going by who personified ECW and had the better run at ECW, it's close, but I got to go with that. Guys, I think it's no surprise. I'm big on the weed, but I'm going to choose Taz. So I think we got Taz going over this week. A little behind the scenes action for you guys. And guys, you you know what the music means. This was another week of the 531. And let's just go out on this beat for a minute now that we got this technology to talk over this. And if you don't agree with us, suck it. Right. We respect their opinion. <laughs> yeah, we hey, if they want to find us, where can they find us, AJ? Guys, you can find us on Twitter at the working fan. You can also find us uh, at fans working. With us. You can <laughs> at fans working. Absolutely. As always, I'm on the ball. Hey, also, it's been so long since we've done these intros. We haven't had to in a while, but thanks for listening, guys. <laughs>